Welcome back for another OG Show Live. Mr. Randall, how you doing? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Real Down. Welcome back to another episode of Bass Fishing for News. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to, once again, the Bass Kayak oh, News. Brother! This is the final cast. Another segment of uh, Chasing the Tide, your saltwater connection on the Palatine. Welcome back, everyone. Another episode of Feather and Fur, your host. Yeah. Welcome back to my Pasta. I'm your host, Chris Cook. Hey, and welcome back to Off the Water. Happy Hey, guys. Welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. Brought to you in part by Pelican, built to protect. Eastport Marina, Del Hollow's go to marina and resort. And Yak Gadget, American made accessories and gear. Welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast, a member of the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're streaming live via Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, bringing you the latest in fishing tips, gear reviews. Now, let's join John Rapp, your host. Hey, hey, guess what? This isn't Jay Randall. It isn't Brian Schiller. It's me, John Rapp from the Rusty Hook. It's Takeover Tuesday and we're live here and we're streaming via Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. So it's an honor and a pleasure to be able to jump over from the Rusty Hook page, running my live streams now, to doing them here with Brian and his crew at the Paddle and Fin podcast page. So um, if you see that little black area on to the right, it's a, it's a chat box. If you're watching, let me know that you're here. Hit your like button, follow or share. Would love to know that you're there. As you can see there, we're, uh, the, the Twitch emblem's up. So hey, I got Randy Newton. Hey, Bobby. Randy Newton is a, uh, a heavy contributor to this show, my man from Florida. He was featured last week in our Angler Profile series, and we're going to do that again tonight. And I got a great guest from down in the uh, the swamps, uh, a former and retired military guy that many of you know of. His one of his nicknames is Big Fish, that he will be on. So, how was I able to jump over here and take over uh, this site? Me and Brian have been working on this. So what I finally did, I don't use the same software that those guys use. They use StreamYard, which is a browser-based streaming platform. I use OBS. Happy Thanksgiving, Randy. So uh, my former platform was Streamlabs, and now I'm using Prism Live Studio, which gives me the opportunity to change my locations for my streaming. And... The other good thing is, is we're, like what we're seeing there with Randy, I'm able to see the chat live, and I don't have to go look at it on my phone. So I appreciate you guys uh, hitting the button. Uh, Elvis Slee, glad you're on, buddy. You're, you're going to be seeing uh, some answers to some questions that somebody that you may be very familiar with provided for us in the Angler interview segment. I uh, appreciate you uh Appreciate you, brother. I mean, you've been you've been a, 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 a inspiration. You and your boys are amazing, guys. If you if you want to see some great video content, go look at Elvis, what he does up in Minnesota. And I tell you, he's got them two boys uh, out there with him slaying some smallies. So anyway, um, tonight's show uh, is about something that I'm I'm work, I'm wanting to do. Okay. So but let, me, let me take you over here to this page here. This is my Rusty Hook page. If you fellas haven't already done so, or ladies, um, go over and like that page. Um, 
what I've there's a lot of there's 50 episodes over there from this year so far, um, but we'll, we'll keep putting our, our streams up over there for the ones that missed the live streams and uh, other other uh, information. You know, I, I did have a, a shot here from. I want you to look at you know, John and Seth from our friends up in Pennsylvania from fishing online are having a sale. So. And that's part of what this show is about, is Black Friday. Um, so, oh, I'm trying to figure out how the software works, but it looks like uh, we've got four people watching on the Facebook, and we've got one at Twitch. Interesting. i got to learn this stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a little different than what I've used before. But uh, anyway, um, Black Friday, so... Anyway, I, I've been trying to find some sales, okay? And um, one of the things that I'm wanting to do, that many of us do that have been in, in the industry, is uh, we like to get video of what we're doing out in the water. And I've been doing this since 2013. Um, I've used the GoPro, the, the S-Cam. Uh, last year, I went with this Ghost XL. It does okay. The good thing about this this camera, it's actually a camera that uh, Chris Chris Payne from Payne Outdoors pushed me onto, and um, it's a uh, it's it's more made for like motorcycles. A lot of mo motorcycle guys use them to to do their uh, when they're riding their bikes, and it's it's made to get wet uh, for rain and stuff. The uh, only thing that I don't like about it is the sound quality. It doesn't do a very good job, at least my camera doesn't, of recording sound. But I, it, it'll get it'll get a lot of video for the battery. It's got a built-in battery, and it, it'll take six, seven hours at one time. So if you're looking for something like that, um, what I do for most of my videos is I, I currently I'm using my old iPhone, using my uh, Yak Gadget phone track, and I keep it on. Um, and then when I've got a hookup, I can just hit record. But like, like I was talking with the guys from uh, the Paddle and Fin podcast groups, chat, and some other group chats I'm in, I want to up my game, and I want to be able to record underwater. So this was the little gadget that I used to use, and um, it, it's still a viable unit. What I like about it, it has infrared capabilities. So when it's underwater, I can use the infrared. What I don't like about it is it's old technology. This I bought this in 2014. So it's not Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capable. I can't see what it's, it's seeing like you can with the other stuff, with the screens. And even this thing has a little screen on the back of it. So, um, but I'm looking, what I posed to my friends and to you guys is let's let's see what we can find um, out there to make that game happen. So I went to Amazon. I started doing some searching, and uh, you know there's a lot of cameras out there that have this capability, and most of them are stuck on the side of houses doing surveillance. But I'm not seeing anything, which is which is really surprising because this is. Just a few years old, you know, five years old. I would have hoped by now that uh, some company would have increased uh, you know, the ability to do that. And there's my OG Jay from Tennessee. What's up, brother? So, yeah, um, so really interested on seeing if any of you guys have any input. Help me out on that. Uh, uh, the only... Um, our, our, our resident pro that's really good with videos, Dustin Nichols over in Texas. And Dustin does a lot of red fishing off the coast. And I, I'm looking at some of this stuff. I don't know what he uses or if he does underwater stuff, but I'm talking with him too. And uh, make sure you go check out his stuff. Um, but you can see all this stuff now. They, they've got where you can you can see them on your, 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 uh, your phone. And that's what I would like to do. I'd like to be able to stage this with my transducer off the edge of my boat and then when I'm reeling in my fish of course I'm going to do my best to bring in that fish 
on that side because that's the side I always look at mat anyway. Or use my net. I'm not. I don't use a net very often unless I'm using crankbaits. But uh, so make a comment for me, folks. Let me know what you think on that. I would love to hear from you. And happy Thanksgiving to you all. Um, like I told you, I've got I've got a few people lined up tonight um, that I'm going to call. Uh, that one gentleman is Brad Case down. I think I want to say Mississippi, but I, I know I'm, I'm drawing a blank. That's correct, or not. I think it is. He's over around Alabama, Mississippi, that area. But uh, he he's out. He just I think he just got out of the woods. I got a message from him a little bit ago with a thumbs up that he was going to be ready. And we'll give him a call. Um, but before we get into that, um, take a look at these things, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, and also Black Friday deals. Um, that right there, that Echo Map, you see it right here, guys. Top one. They got some deals out there at Cabela's on on the the down scan live uh, scan, live uh, display. And then uh, if you're looking for some uh, other stuff here that they have, go, make sure you go check out the, the Cabela's. And then of course, you know, I just did a quick search on Black Friday and uh, got Walmart. Um, Cabela's, but the, the, there's the, uh, let's take a look at that, let's see if that'll show up. There's the Black Friday sale, right there is that what we were looking at. Save a thousand dollars on the, the Ultra GTS4, it's a thousand bucks now. So that's something you guys might want to look at. Definitely, I, I, I may consider, I'm in the middle of an upgrade right now, but look at that right there guys, we're, today's the 22nd, so you only have six days. Uh, to, to hit your Bash Pro Cabela's up. So take a look at that when you get time and uh, see what else there's in there to get it. The other thing that we're going to be doing in the near future, I'll be doing uh, hopefully with Randy Newton from Florida. Uh, we've done it last year. We'll see if we can do it again. We did an episode on stocking stuffers. And so, you know, little cameras, uh, just, you know, stuff like that that might be good to throw in your favorite fisherman's stocking. In something that he can use, pliers, hooks, fishing line, you know, some TRDs from Z-Man, but uh, stuff like that. Um, so take a look at that. But let's take a quick break, and then we're going to come back, and then we'll jump into the angler profile part of the show. And I got, I got a couple guys to answer some uh, videos, and then we'll go from there. Ace Resort, West Virginia. Ace Resort, West Virginia's number one destination for whitewater, hiking, zip lining, and more. Check out aceraft.com. That's Brook Supply Company, Georgia's number one go-to kayak fishing supply store. Gear, accessories, and custom rigging. Look them up, westbrooksupplyco.com. Yak Gadget, proudly supplying you with American-made products and gear. Check out yakgadget.com. Feel free kayaks. Paddle, pedal, or power. There's something for everyone. Check out feelfreeus.com. Paint Outdoors is a custom plastic maker, design consultant, product reviewer, and outdoor writer. Check out more at paintoutdoors.com. All right, guys, we're back. Appreciate you. So, yeah, Elvis is right. Uh, if you're on a budget, Make sure you go to the older GoPro Hero. And you know, and, and let's keep in mind that the, my purpose for this is not to get a camera just to, to video with. It's to keep underwater. So yeah, thank you Elvis. So speaking of Elvis, I want to bring you guys up and um, talk to you about, you know, many of y'all don't know how what I've been doing and what I'm introducing, but I've reached out to lots of my nationwide angler friends and family and I've said, hey, um, I want you to answer these seven questions and send me a video response on it. And I'm working on a really special episode that will feature many of our big name women and we can learn a little bit about them. Uh, they're starting to filter in their videos to me. Ladies, I appreciate that. And, uh, looking forward to featuring some ladies from my home state of West Virginia and some ladies nationwide that you guys might want to start following. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at this angling profile series. 
And let's kick it off now. Uh, what is your favorite fishery? Uh, my all-time favorite fishery is going to be uh, lacrosse. Um, just lots of varieties that can suit anyone's strength. What is your favorite fishing technique? Um, that seems to change every year. So, so far this year has been uh, the bladed jig. Would you want to go fishing with for a fun day of fishing? Um, it's going to be my two boys, Tristan and Oliver. Obviously, you've seen me uh, do some river smallmouth fishing with those two. I enjoy it very much. Seven, what is your least favorite fishing technique? Ah, my least favorite is obviously the Carolina rig. I've just never really gotten used to it. I really know how to use it, I guess, but yeah. uh, As far as for the pro, it would be uh, Brandon Polinick, and then uh, one kite angler would be Taz Moore of uh, TM Jigs out of uh, California. When did you learn to fish? Um, as far as I re can recall, when I was around eight years old, I um, was taught by my uh, my uncles on my mom's side. And uh, basically we're just hand lining <laughs> with an empty pop can that will hold the line. What do you consider your greatest accomplishment of fishing? Uh, I would say beating guys out of a folk tube while, you know, fishing against guys in kayaks. What is my favorite fishery? Hands down, the Little Blackwater River in Dorchester County, Maryland, where the northern snake is. And any of the Delaware lakes and ponds is a great place for bass. What is my favorite fishing technique? It's gotta be the chatter bait and the swim bait for the northern snakeheads. And for bass, nothing beats my crankbait. I love the crankbait fish. Deep water, shallow run, medium run. I love the crankbait for bass. Who would be with me for a fun day of fishing? That's easy. My daughter Megan and my daughter Emily. They love to go out in the kayak. Uh, they've got a lure pen that they use. And uh, also my brother and my friends in my bass club and my snake bait club. What is my least favorite fishing technique? It's gotta be the wacky rig, the med rig, and the shaky head. Although they're very effective, and I caught fish with them, Getting snagged all the time. Which anglers do I admire the most? Uh, it's got to be my brother. He, uh, he and I have a lot of fun when we're out kayaking. And also the guys in my bass club, they and my snakehead club. But the guys in the bass club have made me a better angler. I watch them.
when did I learn to fish? It was probably in the early 70s in the Tuckahoe Lake uh, here on the eastern shore in Maryland when they first built it and they stocked it. We were catching big bass. And the Wye River off the Chesapeake Bay for rockfish with my Uncle Butch. What do I consider my biggest accomplishment in fishing? It had to be this year in May of 2022 where I was fortunate enough to win the Virginia Snakehead Invitational in Stafford County, Virginia in the Aquai Creek off the Potomac River. All right, guys, that was Bart Shortall. If you didn't catch his location, he is from Maryland Eastern Shore. Bart, uh, he fishes with uh, the, the team, that one of the teams I'm on, the Feel Free, and the man is a snakehead legend, uh, as you saw in the video with the one he had on his wall. Uh, of course, in the, the previous guy, Elvis Lee, he's a destroyer of smallmouth and musky pike up in the Minnesota area. So, guys, I, I appreciate you guys playing along. We got a couple comments here. We got uh, Brian Slayton. Um, he's using the Hero Four Silver, best camera there is. Thank you, Brian. So anyway, I got a, a guy that we're going to call up, up now here and uh, do things a little differently than what you're used to, PNF folks. So um, I use just standard messenger to make my phone calls, so I can call people up via Facebook Messenger on the video platform. And uh, I, I do it quite a bit. One of the episodes that I do is I call prank calls. And I'll just watch over and I'll see if you're online. And I'll prank call you and talk to you and ask you a few questions. I've done it with Dwayne Wally and some other big name people. And uh, it's been some, some fun episodes. Um, so I think uh, Brian should be standing by for us. So let's go. I'm going to go over here and give him a buzz. I think I said Brian, I meant Brad. <clears throat> now Brad's out in the middle of the woods. Uh, hopefully he can get this signal. having any luck so Brad let's see if he's not he's not showing online so anyway if you're not familiar with Brad well, let's go over here and look at what he does a little bit um, and then I'll, I'll try to buzz him back here in just a sec okay Brad Huh? He's there. He should be online. Let's try him again. Well, he's not available at the moment, appears. So, let's uh, let's go here. I did reach out to this gentleman, and he said for me to give him a call. I was going to save it toward the end of the show. Wait, 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 hold on, here, hold on. Here we go. Hey, hey, Brad. I'm hey. trying. <laughs> it's all, it's all good, brother. I, I told everybody. I told everybody to use it the deer camp back in the middle of God's nowhere. 
Hey, buddy, did you do any good today? Oh, it's back at my house now. Oh, you back at the house? No, I didn't see anything. Well, yes. we had, I, I about killed a monster this morning. The only problem with it was it was before dark and it was in, in front of my Dodge. <laughs> oh, I was, uh, Most people have been doing pretty good with those uh, vehicle <laughs> kills lately. I tell you. Hey, man, um, so uh, let's, let's introduce you. Guys, this is Brad Case, uh, better known in the, the old school guard of kayak fishing as Big Fish Brad. Um, Brad's, uh, if you know anything about him, he, he did a little profile on uh, what he's done, he's accomplished in the, in the past year or so. Uh, but would you say you had uh, uh, over 10 fish or so, over 10 pounds? Am I, am I wrong about that? Um, I, mean, I had, I had, I had as of this, before this year, 18 bass over 24 inches. Okay. I, I, uh, three of those went over 10 pounds. All right. All right. And uh, one was 27 inch or 26 and 26 and three quarter. This That's... year I caught six that went over 24 just this year. Two sevens and that two seven and three quarters about both of those. Two eights. A nine and a ten. That's that's ten four right in that there. That's crazy, Brad. I'm telling you. So let's 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 ask you. Uh, so let's let's get go back into the nuts and bolts of things, man. Um, when did you start fishing? How old were you? When did it all start for you? Oh, looks like. Uh, his internet may have popped off. Hey, Brad, we can still hear you, buddy. You can, you can keep talking. Okay. All right. Uh, started, I know I had some pictures of my dad, me holding the bass, probably about five or six years old. And I knew my grandmother, his mother, took me fishing as good as a kid. And he did, too. I think the thing that got me into the, now, that was just fishing, you know, pond fishing, cane pole, uh, court whatever easiest thing for a kid to start with i got you but i know when i hit my teens and i started working in the fields doing watermelons and corn and stuff like that on the farm uh the owner's brother-in-law when we get through during the day we go fishing and he was probably in his 50s and i was in my early teens and all and it was great having somebody that knew how to bass fish, and he only would carry one rod. And he told me one time, he says, I asked him about line. He says, I buy the cheapest line I can buy. I'm thinking, what? <laughs> he says, but every month I change. Right. He says, I don't care if I fish or not. He says, I buy me another roll of it, put it on every month that I'm going to fish. He says, so I always have a new line. So that he says, that's the reason I can use cheap line. It does great. I don't have to worry about it. I can throw it away what I fish one time or ten times. I said, well, that's an interesting thought. I like my braid. So you're, you use braid? I, I, I lost that trick. I use braid on everything. I got you. Okay. Hey, so uh, let's go to the second question here. Uh, Technique-wise, what is your favorite technique? The thing that got me going to the braid was the frogging. I so you're frogging. top water. And the person that got me into frogging was Alfred Williams. Most people don't know him. He was one of the first guys frog fishing that got into uh, the Bassmasters back in the 80s, late 80s. And he used a scum frog then, about 89. That was before uh, Spro came. Back. Okay. That's interesting. So, uh... Hey Brad, what 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 would you say is your least favorite technique? Drop shot. I hear you, brother. I hear you. Not in my area. And you know where I live up here, a lot of guys use it because we fish a lot of deeper water. But uh, I just can't. I can't do it. Um, I can't do it. All right, brother. Um, so deep water, is, deep water is over my nose. Yeah, I, 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 I would much rather be doing what you're doing, working pads and, and, and shallow water than, than fishing 40 and 50 feet of water. Uh, 
Brad, um, so a lot of folks may not know, but you know, I, I'm fortunate enough that you also uh, helped me with an episode recently, um, and I want to thank you for your service, uh, for the time you spent protecting our freedoms and liberties, and I want to uh, just wish you uh, a fantastic retirement. Um, uh, so, military service, would you, did you do 25 or 30? 33 years. 33? Yes. Was that with uh, full-time and National Guard or Reserves, or was it all? That was National Guard, full-time, Reserve, and Department of Defense. Excellent. Well, again, nothing, uh, wish you nothing but the best, and it just tickles my heart. I'm about to hang my gun belt up here permanently after wearing one for almost 40 years, and uh, I, I, I hope to try to, to match you like when we I saw you at ICAS and, and you know, try to try to get to the, get to that beautiful beautiful look brother um, wow. hey man so um, <laughs> no worries brother hey uh, we lost your video feed but you, you'll come back here in a second um, Next question for you is, uh, if you were going to go out for a day of fun fishing, who would you want to go with? You know, I think a lot of us would say, and then a lot of us would say one thing. One of our family members. So, guys, if y'all if y'all are here, they're going to be gone before you know it yeah I, I totally agree with you sir totally agree with you brother you don't catch anything in our time hey you know when it comes to the, that fun day of fishing it ain't about if you catch anything it's about who you're with and the time you're spending with them if they catch something and knowing you you're gonna put them on a 25 or 26 inch hog monster anyway so it's going to be a double double beautiful day no doubt so okay um let's see um least favorite food what is, hey brad um when you come back brother what is your favorite fishery your favorite place to fish <laughs> uh, guys uh we're experiencing some poor connection but hopefully we we can get brad back um Say a late tonight, and I'd be several of them. Whatever. Go ahead, Brad. Am I there, John? I, I yeah, you're back now, buddy. It's it's I just spotty. Go ahead. Found my shadow in Louisiana. As long as I got pads, I'm happy. <laughs> Oh, I got you. So I hear you. So what what areas of water are they? What 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 state? What area is that? All right. Looks like we may have lost Brad. Hey guys, looks like we lost Brad. Oh wait, he's popped back up. Let me bring him back on screen here. Are you still with me, brother? Are you broke on me, John? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Um, Hey, I appreciate you jumping on. We'll definitely keep up the good work here. I'll, I will get with you again. I'd love to have you on the show again, man. Um, but uh, um, God bless you and thank you for your service and appreciate everything you've done for us. And also, if you can still hear me, when I do, thank you. Hey, when I do hang up that gun belt, I'm going to make a trip down your way. I want to go out and fish with you for a couple days. That'll be fine. I'm putting you in some place. It don't have to be your favorite spot. But... I'm sure you were caught 27. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Hey, Brad, thanks, man. Nothing but love for you, and you have a great evening. All right, take care. Be safe out there. All right. Hey, guys. Got to love Brad Case. I mean, it, that was a struggle. We had some bad connection there, but the dude, um, he is a hammer in, 
in the kayak fishing field. And I want to thank him for taking a few moments to try to reach out and share his knowledge with us, how he got started, his techniques, and things like that. Um, let's call up the, the pod father. Uh, or if there's anybody out there that would like to jump on, uh, just let me know and I'll give you a buzz. Um, looks like there's several people online here. Um, but uh, I, I know I gave my pod father a call a second ago. And he called me back while we were talking to Brad. You guys should be familiar with this man. There he is. What's up, brother? Hey, man, the pod daddy has arrived. Yeah, sorry, I was uh, in the garage <laughs> cleaning up. <laughs> no, man, we, we had Brad Case on for a few minutes. He, we had a bad connection with him down there in the country. Uh, he always struggles with connection, man. Yeah, but, you know, we, I think we got uh, a few of the questions answered. Hopefully the Paddle Fin folks out there will uh, know that Brad A. loves to fish with his family. B, he loves frog fishing, and if it's got pads, he'll fish it. <laughs> yep, yep. And he hates a drop shot. So uh, we, def yeah. <laughs> we, we definitely learned that from him tonight. So, Tuesday takeover here, baby. I'm slid like into the, the PNF page. Old Pod Daddy don't have to go work so hard to grab video and transfer it over, right? So let's, let's go ahead while we got you here, man. Let's let's do an interview with you, Brad. Uh, sure. So, man. hey, uh, we got a few people watching. We got a couple people over at Twitch, and it uh, looks like a uh, half dozen on the PNF page. So, they would like to know when did you learn to fish? Uh, geez, I was uh, I learned how to fish first through the ice, actually. Uh, I, I think I was like seven and uh, went out ice fishing with the old man, caught a huge crappie through the ice. It was uh, 18 and three quarter inches. And, uh, you know, at the time, I didn't know what it was. You know, I was just like, yeah, I caught another fish. And the old man was like super excited. It's the lake he grew up on. So he had never seen a crappie that big come out of there. And, I didn't know what it meant, and now reflecting back on it, and him and I talking about it, it's uh, it's a pretty amazing memory, and uh, it's funny because we always look at the picture, and, and my folks have it hanging in their house, and I always look at it, and I look at the old man, and I'm like, what happened? He used to actually be somewhat decent looking, you know? <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, and then from there, it was uh, fished uh, some some small ponds in the industrial park where uh, my dad worked uh, for a trucking company catching bluegills and occasionally a bass here and there and then uh, in my teenage years I used to ride my bike uh, to the local conservation area that was an old gravel quarry and that's where I really started to uh, learn bass fishing. So. Sweet. Favorite, yeah. your least favorite technique, least favorite, the one you hate to fish. Oh, man, we uh, we talked about that before. It's, uh, you know, I'm with Brad Case, drop shot. Like, and it's not that it's my least favorite. It's just I can't figure it out. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've caught a couple fish and drop shot, but it just, it never feels natural and I don't get bit like everybody else does like I fish next to guys that are throwing it and I'll tie it on and throw the same exact thing and I still can't get bit you know so it, that's that sounds like that sounds like me at Felsmere <laughs> yeah so you know how that goes I know how that feels <laughs> yeah man but you know it happens it's it's just one that uh you know, I try to work on every year to get better at, but uh, unfortunately, I haven't gotten better in the past what three years with it. So, it, it's just one of those things, man. Hey, man. So, what's your favorite technique? Uh, lately, it's been the shaky head, um, fishing deep around structure, just dragging that worm 
around or through brush or around brush and when that bites on fire man it's like they just smack it and there's nothing cooler than like catching a fish in you know 14 plus foot of water and then watching them fish come out tail dancing you know as you're fighting them or they just do those long deep digs you know it's uh it's been a lot of fun and i'm really spoiled that i have a setup where that works really well here on the home lake um so that's that's probably my been my go-to for like the past two years well brad was talking about his some of his achievements you know and so uh looks like i'm gonna have some some issues with my drop rate i don't know standby mode i'm using that new software brother so hopefully everything goes well um, guys if y'all if y'all see any lags out there just drop a comment in there let us know um but uh so he talked about his achievements you know catching all of those monster fish over 10 pounds over 25 inches what would you say your best achievement is like fish wise yeah you're fishing tournament wise like it, it can be anything it can be that you have the best and this most successful podcast fishing podcast in the nation <laughs> or, or or it could be that you caught a 50 inch muskie uh, uh, i mean you, you, you know like it, it's funny man actually lately uh like last year i took a lot of time because uh, i've been fishing out of a boat quite a bit too lately um you know, mainly fishing with my old man and stuff. But uh, this past season, I kind of took a back seat and I've been toying around with the idea of doing some guided trips and stuff like that. And being able to put other people on fish has been a huge achievement for me. Like, it, it's it's more rewarding than catching a big fish. Right. You know, and, it, and it's like I've taken some friends out and friends and their sons or daughters and stuff like that and they're always like pick up a rod and i'm like no man like i i want you guys to catch fish and seeing the smiles on their face is is more rewarding to me than you know me catching a five pounder you know what i mean yeah and you know for those folks down south five pounder doesn't seem like much but up here in the north a five pounder is a big fish you know that's but, right you know, it, it's been pretty rewarding to be able to transfer all the hard work and dedication that I've put into fishing and learning fishing and being able to show that to others and seeing the reward um, of them being able to use my knowledge to catch fish. Uh, you know, like when we started the podcast, it was all about helping grow the sport and not, not just kayak fishing, but fishing in general, right? And, you know, I feel like I see it more up front when I'm, I'm technically, you know, guiding someone to a fish versus doing a podcast, which don't get me wrong. Like I've gotten a lot of emails, instant messages, stuff like that. Like, hey, man, the episode you did with so and so helped me on the water and I caught this fish, blah, 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 blah. But like being there firsthand and being able to see that has been super rewarding to me, I think. Um, you know, like, close second was I got I won a, a tournament this year with my dad, and him and I had always talked about that because he fished a lot of bass trails when uh, I was in high school, and I always wanted to do that with him, and it never worked out because of age restrictions. And uh, so we finally got to do that this past summer, and we kicked some butt and took home some money. So that Outstanding. Was, that, that's a close second. You know what I mean? It's almost a tie for, for you know. Well, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like you and Brad also would uh, state make the same statement when it comes to who would you take with you for a fun day of fishing, and that would be your dad or your family. Yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's definitely got to be family, and that extends further than, like, just my immediate family. That's, like, my paddle and fin family, too. Like, the trip I always look to every year is Dale Hollow. Oh, yeah. We all get to spend some time on the water and, and off the water, too, you know? Um, I mean, yeah, I definitely, it's funny, like, 
you know, now that, uh, you know, we got the boat here and stuff, like, this summer, my wife wanted to get out on the water, so we've been able to spend some time, and she'll read a book, and uh, she got the nickname Nettie, uh, because she loves netting my fish, you know, so <laughs> she saw me struggling, trying to net fish and stuff, yeah. and she's like, well, show me how to do it, and I'll do it, so, like, she really enjoys that, and uh, it, it's been a lot of fun, and you know, definitely like the time on the water with my old man, uh, both my kids, my nephews, um, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's just, uh, you know, close friends and family is, is always a, a great time on the water, dude. And it's memories that I'll cherish forever. So when it comes to anglers that you would maybe look up to, give me a professional and a kayak angler. So, uh, professional, uh, definitely Mike Iaconelli. A um, few reasons for that. I know everybody loves and hates him. Um, but Iaconelli kind of sparked fishing back up in me. I saw him on TV when I kind of fell away from fishing. And uh, I was in probably 20, somewhere around there. And... Uh, I'm like, who is this guy freaking out on a boat, you know? And I was like, I like that. Like, that's how I feel when I catch a fish, you know? So it kind of re-sparked that, that whole, you know, passion for fishing. But not only that, you know, you look further, like, past Mike Iaconelli, the tournament angler, what he's done for charity, getting mm -hmm. kids into fishing, uh, his media stuff that he does. Uh, some of the companies he works with or, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know, but him and his wife run an agency for helping new and upcoming anglers um, and helping them build careers and make a path in the actual fishing industry. So that's, that's super cool. And that's something dear to my heart. You know, it's like, uh, I, you know, had a few mentors that helped me kind of find my way into this whole thing. And uh, I try to help other guys out too that, um, you know, look at, you know, how can I be a part of this, you know, you know, fishing world a little further than just going out on the weekend and fishing and stuff. So um, definitely him. And then kayak anglers, man. Um, geez, like there's so many good ones. Josh Stewart, Cody Milton, Derek Brundle, Jody Queen. Um, Craig Dye is a is a really good good dude and uh, you know it's like all those guys right they're hammers on the water but they're also hammers in life you know like they treat you like a normal human being I've talked to some of those guys besides like on the podcast like running into them at a tournament or something like that they, you know it's like they treat you with respect uh, they answer your questions and uh, you know, it's almost like we've been friends for years, you know, it's like uh, just normal conversation like, you know, I would have with you on a phone call or seeing you in person. Um, and they bring a lot of dignity and respect to the sport. They've done a, a lot of cool stuff um, with helping grow the sport of kayak fishing. All those guys are OGs, you know, they've been yeah. around for years. And, um, but, but the way they act both on and off the water, dude, uh, I think it makes some, some stand-up guys for sure. I hear you, man. Speaking of uh, some big names, um, my boys down in Georgia, Fletch Griffin there at Westbrook Supply, they yeah. got a ri river bassing seminar that they're going to be putting on, and I'm going to share the link to that, guys. Uh, but the three folks that are going to be speaking at this event are Drew Gregory, Jeff Little, and Steve Sammons. So they, they oh, got nice. they got they got a line up there. So uh, yeah, I, I'll show you guys that here shortly. But it's a it's a meet and greet seminar. It's at Westbrook Supply. It's on December eighteenth. So it's a month from now. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, seminar pro series is fifty dollars, and the meet and greet is free. So it's a three hour three hour seminar from four to seven p.m. and the meet and greets from two to four. So that's cool. 
Yeah, that is. It's pretty sweet. I wish I went, we didn't live so damn far away, you know? Yeah, dude, I'd love to see uh, my boy Mikey Monavon. Oh, there. I know, uh, man. It's always a pleasure uh, running the Flex, man. Two of the, two of the coolest guys that run shops in the country, like, yeah. or runs a shop in the country. And I know Fletch has got that new new spot um, that they just opened up, and it, it's huge, man. Uh, yeah. I remember first hearing about Westbrook when uh, Future was doing Westbrook Wednesdays and stuff like that. And, you know, I've talked to Fletch on podcasts, at trade shows, things like that, man. And, and Mikey is just a hoot, man. He'll have he, to be on the he, ground crying, laughing. You know? Them two together are infectious. Yeah, <laughs> infectious, no man. Doubt, no doubt. This, this past yeah. podcast, I got to spend a lot of time with those guys at the New Canoe booth and... Uh, we had that whole build-off competition between yeah. uh, Westbrook and Romel. So it was like East Coast versus West Coast. And getting to see how those guys' brains work on how they rig up kayaks, why they rig them up the way they do. And, you know, they innovated some really cool new products in yeah. that build-out. And, and it was stuff I'd never heard of. And I usually am, like, pretty on top of that. Stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, those two guys, man, they put together a heck of a build and uh, super clean, su everything's done right. And, uh, man, it's just a it's it's a cool following they've built behind the Westbrook name as well, which is awesome. You know, that's I, 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 I mean, the, that build, I, I just I, I, I told him, I said, man, I said, I'm, I'm going to bring my big fish down. And I want yeah. you to do. I want you to do something similar to my big fish. I want to put sure. XI XI three on it, so I can come up the them big lakes up there around where you live and chase yeah. them monster smallies, man. And you know, but uh, heck yeah, man. Yeah. And so let's see. I think I got. Uh, I think we covered just about everything. Yeah, I think we. I think we're pretty good. Pretty good. Man, I appreciate you. Nothing but love for you. No. And no bonus question? I, no, man. Well, you know what? I, there is one bonus question. And I don't know if you want to answer this or if you want to put out information about what you're about to do. Oh. Uh, Are we yeah. going to break, breaking news? Breaking news on the Rusty Hook? Breaking yeah, news? Uh, we we've, we've briefly mentioned, mentioned I have something coming up on uh, the OG show, but... Uh, Okay, we will. Yeah, we'll, no. we'll just we'll just we'll stop right there. OG show no. in, in forty eight hours. No, no, no. Come no. come and uh, get. We we could break break the news, but uh, no, no, no. I uh, tomorrow is uh, actually my last day in the construction world, and uh, <laughs> I'm, taking up, I'm taking up a position uh, doing some marketing. Uh, we'll be doing some product development and stuff for uh, fishing and hunting. Uh, I'm going to work for uh, Pine Ridge Archery, Dubro Fishing, and uh, Dubro RC. And uh, it's three companies, uh, you know, that are all under one roof. Um, you know, I've known about Pine Ridge Archery for many years since I started bow hunting. And, uh, and they I didn't know about the fishing side of things. So I'm going to be doing some marketing. And they want to make a push into the uh, fishing world. They couldn't have got a better guy. We're, look, we're looking for looking at some kayak stuff, um, things like that. So it's exciting, man. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a formal announcement on my social media tomorrow uh, after I uh, clock out at work, you know, and... Uh, it, it was a it was a really hard decision, and uh, because you know the people I work for now are, are really good people, and I get along with them really well, um, and they've treated me well, and it, it wasn't an easy decision by any means. But you know, at the same time, I've been kind of working towards this with everything I've done with paddle and fin, my personal fishing stuff, things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, some of the companies I work with, and. Um, gonna give it a shot man you know yeah. I've always talked about you know possibly getting into working in the fishing industry and you know hunting industry stuff like that the whole outdoors industry as a whole so 
you know, this opportunity came up and uh, I applied for it. And after what three interviews, three, yeah, three interviews and a dinner, um, you know, I got an offer and uh, I decided to accept it. And uh, it, it's going to open up some some doors for me for sure. Um, but I'm excited to see what uh, what we do. With it. You know, it's uh, it'll be super interesting. All I could say is just keep an eye out on Dubro Fishing. It's D U B R O, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there, man. So. Hey, I got I got some more breaking news. Uh, the final cast has been canceled. The final cast is getting canceled. Matt Souter says finally getting the sex change. I figured that that's going to be a get, getting him canceled from the panel of Vin- <laughs> I don't know who's writing that. But that's uh, it's, uh, some kind of inside joke there, but. Uh, yeah, Matt. It's, uh, it's Matty. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I, I need to talk to those guys because uh, I'd, I'd like to sit down and do a podcast with those guys on, uh, on the fishing with the things. Yeah. Uh, for Dubro and, um, you know, kind of get the word out on, on what they have going on. They offer some plastic baits. They offer a lot of stuff for, you know, walleyes and trolling and stuff like that, too. But, uh, you know, after a few conversations with the owner, they want to make a big push in the bass fishing world. So um, it, it's kind of exciting, you know. It's uh, the product development side of things. Uh, is exciting to me. It's something that I really enjoy, and I'm I'm really looking forward to. Well, Matt just said congratulations. He's, Thank you, he, he says you're going to do great. So, hey, man. Let's, any any other breaking news you want to put out? I mean, I was you 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 opened up that can right there, so I I let let it flow. So, um, I've been getting a lot of messages, so I'll, I'll say it here too, and I've been. Uh, saying it on uh, our podcast as well. A lot of people are asking when Dale Hollow is. Uh, it's the weekend of April 22nd. Um, so start making your plans. I know guys are starting to you know, see schedules release and things like that and want to plan uh, all their stuff for next year. So, uh, yeah, the weekend of April 22nd. We're doing it a little bit later this year. We announced that way back when, but just want to bring it up and refresh people's memories uh it should be a hot time of year man like it seems like we always get stuck with that cold front when we do it yeah at the beginning of the year and there was some fish up on beds this this past year we were there we did get some warmer weather but i think being a couple weeks later you're gonna see a big push and a big influx of some some big mamas being caught so uh should be a lot of fun man looking forward to it and uh i get to go down there twice this year because the other one's for uh mr mr randall's getting married yeah so, uh i'll be down there uh later in may as well so uh just excited for that man and uh you know i'll bring the i'll bring the moonshine i look forward to it yeah to it. for both events <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. But, uh, yeah, man, other than that, oh, uh, Paddle and Finn, we're going on a break uh, December 9th, I think it is, or 10th. Yes, for, for and, a month. Uh, yeah. through, through January. So, <clears throat> you know, all our guys uh, and gal worked extremely hard this year. Uh, we've, we've had tremendous growth, both adding some shows like the Rusty Hook after we finally twisted your arm 20 times. And... Uh, you know, not only that, but uh, listeners, man. It's, uh, you know, you listeners out there, you guys are what helps drive us to continue to do this. And uh, we look forward to it, but we're all looking forward to the holiday break, getting some rest, and uh, coming back just as strong in 2023. And I can say there's going to be some more stuff added in 2023. So. Um, be on the lookout for that. A lot more great, cool content uh, revolving around kayak fishing, fishing, hunting, you know, all the outdoor stuff. So Maybe even a little whitewater stuff, too. Yeah, we're, we're looking at 
adding a whitewater segment, a mm-hmm. rec kayak segment, you know, so it, I mean, we, you know, we just love the sport in general, right? And uh, we all love these little plastic boats and uh, it all brings us together and we're always, you know, looking to encourage people to try different aspects of the sport of kayaking and uh, not just fishing, you know, like I love floating rivers and just going on a paddle with a couple friends and you know bringing a rod maybe if not just enjoying the scenery you know so uh definitely looking at you know adding some of that stuff so 2023 should be another year of of good growth and uh continuing to bring more content to you guys and gals you know we always get the comment like man it's hard to listen to everything well that's the thing we offer so much like we want you to be able to pick and choose. I know right. some people don't listen to my show, but they listen to yours. Or, you know, they'll listen to the final cast, but they don't listen to the real down and vice versa, you know. And right. some people just consume it all, you know, and that's that's just it. You know, it's all there for uh, if and when you want to consume it. And we hope you enjoy what you do listen to. So. Amen, buddy. Exactly. That's exactly right. We're yeah. tr- try to provide a lot of, out- a lot of out- output and let you decipher what you yeah. want. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of guys that kayak fish aren't all about the kayak fishing tournaments, you know, right. so they don't listen to the reel down or, you know, vice versa, man, you know, and it's like Jay and I have kind of expanded out and talking to different companies, and we've had some companies that aren't even involved in fishing, you know, and uh, but it's, it's cool stuff, and... Uh, we kind of take that Joe Rogan style approach, so we know not everybody's going to listen to what uh, we have going on. But um, you know, we have so much kayak fishing content. You know, it's like it's not a big deal. We look at it that it's not a big deal. But if we could talk to somebody cool about something different that you know does interest the outdoors person, then so be it. You know, I hear that, man, and I, I totally agree. And that's why I jumped in with you guys. Uh, uh, yeah. Full throttle, but all both feet in, you know. So right, right, right. So right. Yeah. all right, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's, right. let's 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 hey, lock. Uh, before you let me go, I hope you and the wife have an amazing Thanksgiving. Everybody listening, watching, I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy your time with your your family, your friends. Uh, you know, life is short, man. So cherish those times and. Yeah. Uh, Give thanks for, you know, just being together, man. And uh, I hope everybody has a safe and wonderful holiday. And uh, that's it, man. Hey, man, sir, uh, you know, speaking of which, Thursday is Thanksgiving. Are you doing your show Thursday night or y'all going to take the night off? No, we're, we're off this Thursday. Okay. Um, the, the final cast, uh, their show will go up. And they okay. had on uh, Jamis, Jameson Redding. Uh, beautiful. About the new coup to X. Yeah, or beautiful. No, it was uh, Chris Funk. Chris Funk. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, Jay and I are planning on having Jameson on um, to talk uh, a little bit about that in a couple weeks. But, uh, you know, the the final cast will still get released. Um, so, you know, you'll still have content Thanksgiving while you're sitting around drinking your coffee. Yeah, go, go back and catch the episodes you missed. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, and that's why we take that, that longer break. You know, you could always go back and know if there was an episode you missed that gives you time to catch up man and it's crazy to see how many plays we get even when we're not putting out content so uh thanks everybody i just i wish everybody a a happy and safe thanksgiving if you're traveling be safe uh you know eat plenty of turkey and uh worry about working it all off friday (laughs) you know but pig out you know amen man amen enjoy oh thank you brian Nothing but love yeah, to you, my man. Time, brother. Nothing time. but nothing but love for you, brother. Two more, big daddy. Two more. Two more. All right. So that was my boy and your boy, the OG Brian Schiller, jumped in uh, and gave us his feedback on the questions for our angler profile segment. I appreciate uh, Jason, Jimmy, Jimmy, and old Matt Souter. So love you, bro, and uh, all you guys jumping in on the comments and. So this time, next couple of days, enjoy your time with your families. 
Stay safe. Check the air on your tires. Watch for black ice. And squeeze and hug your family at all times. This is John Rapp. Nothing but love for you. Signing out.